makes you tick and what ticks you off. What are spiritual gifts and what gift is it that you have? That is what I'd like to share with you in the next three weeks. I'd like to teach you and help you to know who you are, what makes you tick, why you behave certain ways, and the gift that God has given to you. These are, this is a mini seminar that even if you want more information later on and get a booklet with it, that I encourage you to get online at barbtv.org. I think it will actually greatly help you because I know, I just know how much it has changed my life and what it can do for you. Before we go there, I'll give you a little bit of layout what we're talking about today. We're talking about the second in the series today and what it is that we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the greatest compliment that Jesus has given you, that he wrote in the Bible. Then we'll talk about what the misconcepts are about spiritual gifts and what spiritual gifts, what are the differences between talents and spiritual gifts, what the differences are between the fruit of the spirit and spiritual gifts. And then we're going to talk about how you can know the five key ways that you can find out what your gift is. I think you're gonna really enjoy and like what you're gonna get out of today because I know it will change your life. So before we do that, why don't we first say a quick prayer. Dear Lord God, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you right now, the viewer, what God has given you and the difference that he wants to make in your life to thrive and shine, to share with the purpose that you have given each person here today. Jesus gave you the biggest compliment in Matthew 5, verse 13. And this is what it says. You are the salt of the earth. During Jesus' time, the Romans believed there was nothing more useful than salt and sunshine. And it had made a big, big difference for people. And it was almost basically life-giving. During Jesus' time, there were three different things that salt did. First of all, they saw it as purity. And the purity meant it's white glistening. It's kind of almost little diamonds in it. it was so pretty that it looked really pure. The Jews during that time used it with their sacrifices at the end of the day. The Romans used it with the sacrifices. They saw it as something pure. When a person becomes a Christian, there is a change in their life and they become more pure. Their, their sins get cleansed outside of them. They are forgiven. And the result is there is something different about them. That weight falls off their shoulders. Then the second one is, it is a preservative. It was their refrigerator during those days. And it saved, it helped, it protected from things going bad. When there are bad times in your life, and as a Christian, you can hold on to God and He helps you to get through it. He saves you to get through it. He protects you to get through it. There is a difference. And then the last one, which is my favorite, it brings flavor. Salt brings flavor to food. I remember my father, or my, actually my grandfather years ago in the Netherlands was not allowed to have any salt. And every time we went there, we ended up eating food without any salt, including meat, vegetables, everything. And it just tasted like kind of a blah taste. It just was not good. When you're not active in your faith, you kind of become a blah Christian. But when there is flavor, People see a difference in you. You make a difference. So Jesus says here, you are the salt of the earth. When you are the salt of the earth, you have a purity, you're different. You are a preservative. You're, there's things in you that are saving, protecting, helping you. And then you bring flavor to your life and to those around you. How is it that you can do that? One way that you really can do that is by knowing your spiritual gifts and by knowing how you could use that gift. And that's again what I want to talk to you about today. It says actually in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 12, first one, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, which is Paul that is talking, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. He says, I want you to know, I want you to understand what your spiritual gift is. There are five knots in the spiritual gifts as well. First of all, it's not for personal use. It's not a talent. It is not a fruit of the spirit. 
And not every believer has the same spiritual gifts. And then it is not revoked. And it says in the Bible, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So you might be saying right now, well, what, if there, what about those misconcepts? What about those knots? What happens if you do that anyways? Well, when people work outside of their spiritual gifts on a regular basis all the time, often the results are that they get completely burned out. They are just not able to halt because they're working outside of the gift that God has given them. They also take the blessing away of people that were supposed to have the gift, that were supposed to have that job that God had given them, and they get frustrated. Now, what is it that I mean by that? How do they get frustrated? The way they get frustrated is they're ending up doing something they first of all did not really want to do. For example, I remember a couple of years ago, a friend of mine was all excited and she says, I am so excited. I am going to be at Vacation Bible School with lots of children this summer and I get to make 250 peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Now, to be honest, that sounds totally awful to me, but she was excited about that. And then a week later, she came to me and says, I can't believe what just happened. I am so frustrated. Those were literally her words. Because she said, I was just told that I am not going to make the sandwiches, but that I am going to have to teach 25 three-year-olds at Vacation Bible School. And she was upset. And what had happened, they needed someone in that slot and they had taken, the director had taken her and moved her into something that they thought would be needed immediately. But what actually ended up being the result was that they took her out of her comfort zone, the gift that God had given her and made her do something that she really did not want to do and that she was not passionate about. Now, do you think what, what would be the end result? The end result would be frustration and the children not being taught to the most that they would have been able to learn that day. Spiritual gifts are very, very, very important. And when it's done right, when it's used the way it's supposed to be used, when we accept the gifts that God gives us, is when it is like you thrive and shine in your life. And the present is right here it's a present it's like a birthday gift a spiritual birthday gift and it's pretty neat actually when you, when you get a gift from the lord because you know what that does it gives you purpose it gives you a god that believes in you to make a difference in this world the spiritual gift is come, comes actually from the word spirituals and from the word charisma and each of us have a special gift god has given you purpose god has a plan for you and the exciting part about it is you're going to be passionate about it and it says in romans 12 verse 6 since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us each of us is to exercise them accordingly spiritual gifts are five different things some of the five different things a spiritual gift is a spiritual given ability for Christian service. It's a gift of grace. It is to upbuild the church. It's to bring to the church a healthy church body. There are all these different things. It does make a difference. And it is not for you just to use for yourself, but to bring unity to the church. God believes in you so much that he wants to give this gift to you and make a difference. And it says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You know, Every person that believes in Jesus gets one gift or more gifts. And I'm going to talk to you more later about how many gifts there are, what the meanings of the gifts are, and actually what, is, what it is that God has in store for you, which is so much bigger than you ever would have imagined yourself. But for today, we're going to just focus more what the sources of the gift, what the nature is of the gift, what the purposes of the gift, and what the five keys are for you. But before I do that, we will be right back. I'm 
I'm just so excited to be able to share with you that God has a plan for you. He wants you to love your life and to live it abundantly. And that's what my passion is for you. I want you to love your life, to enjoy your life, and to see the benefits that God has for you in mind. He doesn't just want to leave you where you're at, but He wants to make a difference. And that is what Love Your Life Ministries is all about, to help you grow and draw closer to God, for you to have a great life that totally focuses on what God wants for you. And guess what happens when you do? Your life will change, not for the worst, but for the better. It is going to be a blast. Hi, we want to help you to learn to love your life. Watch the show, start reading your Bible, pray for yourself and your loved ones. Get to know us on the website, call us, we'll pray with you. It works. Keep watching and love your life. Welcome back and we're talking about spiritual gifts today that God has given you a gift or mutual gifts, more gifts than one and that today I would like to explain to you what those gifts are, what the meanings are and how you can know what gift God has given to you. The source of a spiritual gift, so let me back this up for you for a moment, a spiritual gift is a spiritual given ability for Christian service. Its nature is its spiritual endowment. It's encouraged by the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit working inside of you. It's not just something natural, it's supernatural. And its purpose is to edify the saints and to build up the body of Christ. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that amazing that God wants to use you in this? And then you'll say, well, Barbara, what actually is the difference? Are there differences between talents and spiritual gifts. And I have to tell you, absolutely. Because if you look at a talent, you get a talent basically from the moment you're born. It's in you, it's just ingrained in you. It's what you are, what you do. It's inside of you. But a spiritual gift starts from the moment you have had rebirth, a spiritual birth, when the Holy Spirit comes inside of you. That's the difference right there. And then you have its source with a talent is basically methods. It kind of becomes natural. It's kind of easy. But the source of the spiritual gift, it's a power from within yourself. It is brought to you. It's given to you. It's the Holy Spirit leading you. Its purpose with a talent is that it's kind of you make it yourself better. It becomes natural. You're taught. You're trained, especially in the Olympics. That's a great example of a talent. But with the Lord, a spiritual gift, it is actually just brought to you. A great example of that was one time um, a young guy said, I want to be a pastor, but he was kind of having a really hard time with words. He was stuttering all the time and his parents like said, no way. But it was a calling from God and it was, he was passionate about it. It was given to him. And when he preached, he never stuttered one word. It just became so natural. That's how God can actually use someone that you never thought would be good at something and yet make that happen completely. And it says in 1 Timothy 4, verse 14, do not neglect, do open. Don't let the spiritual gift just stay where it's at. Don't just put it on the shelf, but it says, do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through prophetic utterance with the laying of the hands by the presbytery. Take pains with these things, be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in the, these things for as you do these, this you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. Now, this is spoken directly to Timothy, but a lot of this you can use today. It says, do not neglect, open the gift God has given to you. Take pains with these things. Don't stop when it becomes hard. Be absorbed in them. Learn about them, what God is sharing with you. Pay close attention. Persevere. Don't stop. 
especially myself, when I became a speaker, it was hard. I didn't get the help right away I needed. I did not know where to go. And it didn't come overnight, but I was passionate about it. I knew God had that calling on my life. You know what you're passionate about. You know the calling that God has had on your life. And you say, this is what God wants me to do. You go do that. You follow through because God will open the right doors. I just guarantee it. And then it says, it will ensure your salvation, but it also will ensure the salvation of those around you. Why? Because when you bring flavor to this world, when you persevere, when you are like a preservative, and when you shine and are excited in what you do, that's when it turns around and people get affected about that. You just can't help it. And what's something that might be coming to mind to you right now is saying, well, well, Barb, if, if, what about the fruit of the Spirit? Is that not part... Is that not part of spiritual gifts? It says in Galatians 5 verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. In 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians 14, it talks about spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians 13, the first half, it talks about spiritual gifts. But then in the middle of all of this, it talks about fruit of the Spirit. And Paul says it is more important to have the fruit of the Spirit than spiritual gifts. But when you use those two together, what an amazing gift this becomes. Love, joy, peace. When you add that to the spiritual gifts and add these characteristics, it becomes an incredible opportunity to shine your life, to love your life, and to make a difference, whatever your gifts is. Now, some of the differences are between fruit of the Spirit and spiritual gifts. A fruit of the Spirit is singular but the fruit, as it says in the Bible. Spiritual gifts are many different gifts. The fruit of the Spirit everyone should have. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We all should have that. But the spiritual gifts, there are different gifts for different believers that God has given you. A fruit of the Spirit comes within. It is brought from within through the Holy Spirit led, through Jesus given to you. But spiritual gifts are given from without and brought within to yourselves. It is the opposite. Do you see the difference in that? It's amazing, isn't that? How they really go together and yet they are not the same. So you might be saying, okay, Barb, give me more. Ephesians 4, verse 12, and he gave some as apostles, now we're back to spiritual gifts, and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain the unity, there is that word again, the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. The two key words I want to focus on here, the equipping, the building up, and the bringing of unity, the bringing of unity. It says it just beautiful. When do you get this spiritual gift? It doesn't exactly say exactly the moment you get when you get the spiritual gift, but you get it when you get the Holy Spirit in your life, when you become a Christian. A great example of this is the Apostle Paul. He went down to Damascus and Jesus stopped him saying, why are you persecuting my people? He is struck blind. He is in Tarsus. And then a man comes to him with the spiritual gift of exhortation that comes alongside. Did he want to go? Not really. They were scared of Paul. He was persecuting the church. And at that moment, when Paul becomes a Christian, while he works with Barnabas, he realizes the gift he has within and immediately wants to just be evangelizing in the world, wants to be the apostle, make a difference in this world. And they say, not yet. They're afraid of you. But it was immediately, and it showed immediately. And you're like, wow, he knew. 
So what I'd like to talk to you about now is what are the five things, the five ways that you know what spiritual gift is. Remember the spiritual gift is the spiritual given ability for Christian service. And it says in Romans 1, verse 11, for I long to see you and I long to see you too. For I long to see you so that I may impart some spiritual gift to you that you may be established, that you may be established. Five ways that will help you with this. Number one, what are you passionate about? What is it that you're passionate about in this world? I am passionate about relationships. I am passionate about people getting to know God better. I am passionate about that. How do you work that? Sharing, preaching, talking, teaching, evangelizing. That's one way. So your first number is what is it that you're passionate about? What have others told you that you're good at? that you, they know, that see in you, that you could make a difference in this world. What have others told you about that? You would want to improve it. That is number three. You would want to get better at the gift that you had. You constantly talk about it, number four. So you want to talk about it. You want to improve it. You're passionate about it. Other people will tell you about it. And then the last one is it. God will open doors. God will open opportunities for you. Is it always going to be easy? Absolutely not. But He will open the right doors for you. And you will say to me right now, well, why is God not giving me this gift of teaching or speaking or serving or administration or, or, or in mercy or in faith? Why doesn't He give it to me perfect? Well, guess who you would be depending on if God would give you that gift perfect? It would be you. And God wants you to have unity with the body of Christ. God wants you to upbuild the church. And in one way, He can help us to work together is but by the growing together, learning from one another, and to move forward. So five, one more time, those five things. Passionate, improving, readily talking about it. Other people will ta tell you about it. And God will give you opportunities. He will open doors. When you start praying about this, when you start to get to know this God that wants to give you this gift and believes in you, and when you open this gift, guess what is going to happen? Because what will happen at that moment when you start using your gifts, you will bring flavor to the world, you will be a preservative to the world, and you will bring purity through Christ who died for humankind to make a difference on a cross and wants to save every single person. And when you take this to heart and when you're going to do this, you become the greatest compliment that God, that Jesus has given you the salt of the earth. You will love your life. I gave you just a, a little tidbit right now, what God can do to you, but there's of course so much more to talk about. This is a part of a series of three time. Next time we'll be talking about the 19 different gifts and there was more to know, is it equal or not? Is it for female and male the same? What are the gifts? All of that I will be sharing with you next time. And in the meantime, if you'd like to get a copy of this series or more information about it, I encourage you, contact us at barbtv.org or contact us at 855-836-1100. It's a toll-free number for you. Or if there is any way that we have encouraged you today, or inspired you, we would love to hear from you. Or if you'd say, Barb, do this different, contact us. It is again, barbtv.org. And let me say a quick prayer with you. Dear Jesus, I pray for each person right now, each viewer, help them to know you. And when they know you, to know what their spiritual gift is. Thank you for believing in them so much that you have made them part of your big plan to make them salt of the earth. Amen. God loves you. God believes you. And so do I. Contact us. 
We want to help you. Have a great day. Let's go. 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 Are you prepared for what's to come? Don't you be scared to have some fun. Don't be ashamed to dance before the sun. He's the one who keeps me from falling. When you're in need of praise, you're not by yourself. He's worthy of the praise, not anyone there. This is a celebration. Every heart, every nation, shout. Here's what I do.